My name is Oa Smokey, and my dad was in the army, so that's how we came. It was through him and his friends. Well, I, I was a kid when we came here. I was nine years old, so I didn't really know much, but it was much better than Iraq. I mean, I was there, and we were just always in the streets, but here, you're not. You're always at home, and it's so much different. Um, well, Lincoln's a calm place. And that's a place that I like. Uh, it's really nice. Like, the people here are so nice. I've been to Chicago and other places, but it's really, I don't know, it's really busy, and people don't really have time for each other there, mm -hmm. or they kind of get rude on the streets, <laughs> things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, for the first time, I love the snow, but now I don't really like the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the cold at all. Yes, um, I don't really work at the center. I just volunteer here sometimes when they need people uh, to do things. But I work at Solarion, which is a drug testing laboratory. And I've been working there for uh, eight months now. So for my job, it's uh, you kind of do a little bit of everything that a nurse would do. We do ECGs, vital signs. We do urine processing and blood, uh, we draw blood, do blood collections, mm -hmm. and we dose people, things like that. Uh, yes, uh, when I was going, my senior year in high school, I worked at McDonald's, and my senior year, I actually didn't go to high school. I just took um, classes at FCC because I was all done with my credits. So I got my, uh, um, my Med-Aid certif uh, certification and my CNA and my phlebotomy. So I just like working in the healthcare and trying to help people out. Um, well, <laughs> my uh, when I was doing these classes, all my friends were Americans. I literally didn't have any Yazidis in my classes. Mm. But when I was in high school, I did have Yazidis in my classes. They were just beginning to come to high school and mm. know the experience and trying to learn everything. But um, my Yazidi friends thought it was really cool, and some of them are actually trying to do that too, <laughs> to work with the TCA and high school get done really fast. Mm -hmm. I mostly worked with my high school counselor really, um, a lot, and he's the one who helped me through all of this, and who actually um, told me or asked me about um, trying to move faster, and I was like, yeah, this is going to be amazing. Like, I want to be done really fast. <laughs> So he said, okay, um, so my senior year, he said, uh, if you do want to get this done fast, you should do summer school or some online classes when you are here. So I remember one semester I took nine credit, I mean nine classes. That was really stressful, but I didn't have a job at that time, so I got everything done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was the one who pushed me through it. No, um, all, I don't know. They were all open-minded. I've yeah. always liked my schools, and everybody has always been so nice to me yeah. at school. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to SEC right now, hopefully transferring to UNL this coming fall. And I really want to get into med school yes. because I want to study surgery, um, heart surgery. So... I thought maybe get into med school and try to do what I can to help others. Mm -hmm. And I know when somebody is sick, they're trying to do it, um, anything they can to help that person. For example, if my brother is sick or my sister, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always trying to help them and see what I can do to help them feel better. That makes me feel better trying to help others. When I first came here, I didn't know English, obviously. But when I did learn English, I made so many friends that are from all around the world. And that's really cool to me, like to know about other cultures and know there's so many people out there who aren't like you, who have a different mindset. And that's really cool. I mean, it, it has kind of. When you're really young and you move here, it will and it has affected you a lot. But I mean, when you are, um, growing up in Iraq and you come here as a teen or as an adult, it doesn't affect you that much. But with me, it has affected me, even though 
I follow all my culture, uh, cultural rules and things like that. I mean, I still wear American clothes, obviously. I don't always wear Yazidi clothes. And I do a lot of things that Americans do. So in Iraq, you would have friends and you would obviously hang out with them. It wouldn't be just as much as you hang out with people here. Like, for example, I can go out with Yazidi people, with American people. It doesn't uh, matter what culture they are. As long as we're friends, we can do that. And I'm, I'm sure in Iraq, it's not like that. Everybody's Yazidi and they're just um, going around and hanging out with each other. Well, my opinion is it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I have friends who are Yazidis, but they date Americans. It doesn't really affect me, but to be honest, it does affect the Yazidi culture. For example, if a woman does marry into the American culture and any other cultures, some of them aren't allowed back in their home. And that's, to me, that's really difficult because why would you leave your family for a guy, you know? <laughs> so I don't really understand why some people would do that. Um, for me, I don't date outside of my culture. If I do date, it's, it's somebody Yazidi or a close friend that is Yazidi. I mean, for me, not really, because yeah. my family is pretty open about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But for other, I have friends who their families are really strict and they don't let them wear certain clothes or do certain things. Well, I love my culture. I mean, it's really interesting. And I've learned about so many other cultures. It's just, they're all kind of, there's always something similar in every culture that you can, you know, have in common with other people. And that's really cool. Well, most Americans don't know about the Yazidi cultures or don't know that this culture even exists because it's so small. Mm -hmm. So I just like talking about it and helping them learn um, that there is uh, more to this world than, you know, America. Because most of my American friends, like, they don't really know that there's other things outside of here and they think everything's safe as um, America is. Mm -hmm. Well, Turkey was amazing. It was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the parks there were really nice. I mean, I hadn't seen parks in Sinjar because Sinjar is a really dry place. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first time that I actually seen it, playgrounds and parks were in Turkey. So that was really cool. They got really stressful and mm -hmm. I don't really like politics that much. Right. Right. So I'm just like, no, I'm saying it. Because there's so much going on, and I don't know. It's just the killing. There's so much killing going on, and I feel like people shouldn't do that. Like, they should just go with kindness, you know? Mm -hmm. Just be nice to everybody, and if there's a problem, come up with a solution instead of, like, having a war. That's, I don't know, that's not my thing. <laughs> yes, I had, from my mom's side, my grandma and my uncle, uh, two of my uncles actually, and my mom's sister, so my aunts, they were in Sinjar. One of them, actually two of them, um, went to uh, Germany during that time when that happened. And some of them are still in the tent, I mean, in Sinjar. Well, I would stay here permanently, but I do really want to visit because of my grandma. But here, there's so much that you can do. You can go to school here, and it's really safe. In Iraq, some people do go to school, but it's not always safe for them. Uh, so I did go to school in Iraq till yeah. third grade. And I remember, um, even if it snowed in Iraq, you would always have to walk to school. So that was kind of hard because when it, it did rain a lot in Iraq. And when it did rain, um, we uh, there was no cement. Like, they barely had any cement, so you would just walk in mud to get to school and things like that. Um, I mean, all I remember was playing with the kids in the streets. And I remember at night, it wouldn't be safe to be out. So, like, everybody would lock their doors. And um, I remember the stores would close when it got dark, things like that. I have no idea. I just know my dad, like, he went to college in Iraq, and um, then he, I guess he had friends who were in the military, so he joined too, and that he translated for them. 
I, w I started with ESL classes, or as they call it, ELL. Mm -hmm. um, I was in ELL classes all through middle school and elementary. Then high school, that's when I got out of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the teachers here are amazing, and they helped me really understand it. Um, but the teachers in public school are really helpful and open. Um, when I first came here, I didn't know anything, so they were talking to me with their hands trying to help me understand. And, and when I did know English in high school, I remember when the genocide happened, the teachers were really supportive, and they were there whenever you needed them. So that's really important here. Well, there's a lot about the history of America and about how women um, became as they are today. And I think it's really cool how just like Iraq women used to be nothing here and how they are doctors right now and that's really important. Yes, I really do think so because um, here um, you can do whatever you want. Your gender, gender doesn't matter. So that's really important to know. And uh, if, if it was like the olden days, you couldn't do anything, you would just sit around at home. And yeah, what would you be doing with your life? You'd just be bored all the time. I mean, um, I remember when I first moved here, I mean, there was a lot of people coming because they had either relatives here or they did work with the army. And right now, uh, with uh, Trump being president, I heard it's really hard to come here. So I don't, I don't really know. At first, I really liked learning about the history of Nebraska, or I mean America, US. It was really interesting to learn all that. But right now, I more, I'm more into science fiction books. I like things like that. Well, I tell them a little bit about how Iraq was and, how, uh, and about how it is living here. And there's a, a difference, like a big difference. So they really get interested in that. Mm. And I think it's really interesting because in Iraq, um, even though I was a kid, it was really hard for some people. Like um, most of them didn't even have jobs in Iraq. They would just be at home or open their own stores and do that. But here, if you actually do want your own business mm. or try to do something, you could do it. Like, if you really want it, you can do it. Um, I don't really remember the war because I was never in it. Like Sinjar, the town was really it was safe, as like it was really safe. But at the same time, it wasn't. And, like, um, my parents would always have an eye on me and my brother. My sister was uh, six months when we came here, so uh, yeah, they would always watch out for us. And we couldn't uh, go further than two blocks from our home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just because of the war, but because of other um, people. Because, like, um, in Sindar, sometimes, like, Arabs or Muslims would come in our streets and try to sell us food and things like that. But then at, the lot, at that time, there were a lot of people getting kidnapped, so they didn't know what the reason was or how it was happening, mm -hmm. things like that. Yezidi culture. <laughs> I've been asked this so many times that sometimes I forget. I'm like, what is it? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but um, what my family has taught me is that the Yezidi culture is you um, are a person just like everybody else. And you have to be kind and open-minded to everybody or in everybody's religion. Um, so Yezidis, they don't, as you know, they don't out marry outside of their religion. And, and if they do, they have to leave their family or leave their religion. Nobody can come into their religion. And if you leave, you leave. Um, and I know some other cultures aren't like that. You can marry into the religion, outside the religion, it's fine. But here, it's, you can't. And I also know that for Yezidis, you always have to be kind to each other, no matter when. If somebody needs you, you have you like have to help them and like they need you and you're there so why not help them and if they need something from you you should always help them
things like that. Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but once you get into it, they um, understand it more. For example, about the women's women being forced to have sex with them. If not, they would be killed. Or about mm -hmm. if you don't um, change your culture or whatever, you were killed. And um, I mean, most of my friends thought that was stupid, and they did not stand with that. I mean, why would you have to change your culture and who you are? And I mean, what the what ISIS did was really wrong because they had. Um, why would they make somebody change their culture or who they are for, for them? I mean, who says that their culture is more important than more important than our culture? I mean, um, the history, it it was kind of similar here because what they did to African Americans that was really harsh too, and. Here, I mean, I've learned to just be open-minded and to respect every culture and religion that is out there because everybody thinks that their culture is important. And, you know, um, who says it's not? I mean, it is. Every culture is important in its own way. So I think that that should be respected and a person should be more open-minded to things like that. Uh, yes, the temple in Iraq, I did go there. Yeah. Um, they call it Lalish. Yes, that's right. I went there when before we came here, actually a few months before we came here. Oh, wow. I went there with my family and my aunt came with us too. Yeah, it was really beautiful. I was really small, so I don't really remember much. Yeah. But so we would walk there. We couldn't have shoes on. We would, uh, I mean, we would go there. There's like a, a water there. Um, they said if you drink the water, it's really good for you and things like that. Yeah. Or, it would give you good luck, something like that. Yeah, I think that's really awesome how everybody just decided to gather up here. <laughs> I mean, there's people in uh, New York and, and Chicago and Canada, but the biggest community is in Lincoln, and I think that's amazing. Like, uh, every store I walk into, every street I go on, there's somebody, is it, right there? Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so because when we have weddings here, the weddings are so big. Like sometimes they wonder if the hall is enough for them because there's like a thousand people going there and they're like, well, there's not enough building. Like the building isn't big enough for people here. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes they come here to visit us too from Chicago, Canada, New York. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have a lot of Yezidi costumes. I mean, the white ones where the older elderly wear, we have those. And then there's some like Kurdish dresses that aren't really yes, like in the Yezidi dresses, mm -hmm. but Yezidi people wear them. I mean, they did wear them in Iraq too because uh, Kurdistan wasn't that far from Sinjar, I guess. And then they were selling their clothing um, in Sinjar. Mm -hmm. So that's how the Kurdish dresses became. Mm -hmm. But with me, I usually just wear American dresses, like prom dresses to those um, events because they expect you to dress well and look nice at those mm -hmm. parties. I think that all of them, all men should wear a suit to weddings and things like that. I think mm -hmm. that's just respectful and they look much nicer like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some that come in shorts. I'm just like, are you guys serious? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if other people care about it, but me and my group of friends were just like, is he serious? Why did he come in shorts? Like, well, I just, um, growing up here um, helps you have a more open mind mm -hmm. and you're set, uh, you can set up for your future at a really young age. And if you really want that, there's nobody or nothing that can get in your way. I mean, if you're passionate enough to want it, you can go for it.